So my name is Sarah Milligan. I'm with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University in the library. Um, I'm here today. It is, oh my gosh, is it March 5th? Thanks. <laughs> 2020. This is the first interview I've done in 2020. And I'm here um, talking with Noreen Durant, but it's Noreen Chisholm Durant, um, about her experience at Shilako Indian Agricultural School. So that's as formal as this gets. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Like, where did you grow up? A little bit about your family and help us get to know you a little bit better? Yeah. Uh, I grew up in a small town, Sperry. It's just north of Tulsa. And I was about a mile from the school. We had some good schools and good teachers. Uh, we had good people there, too. And, uh, well, sometimes we had a school bus run, but if we didn't get up in time to go to catch the bus, we had to walk or run to school. Most of oh. the time I had to run to get there on time. So that was when you were in elementary school? Yes. Um, and it was about a mile from where your house was, uh -huh. right? Um, how long did you go there from, from kindergarten until a certain First, time? Well, they called it primary then. Uh, that's a, uh, what they call kindergarten now. Yeah. But then uh, I w went there through elementary and then they back then it was seventh and eighth grade was junior high mm -hmm. so after then is when i went to shilako okay so you went to the same school from from the whole time before that through day <laughs> I three did. i did so how was sperry growing up in well you know uh this goes in detail seemed like most of the kids there oh they got to go to skating rinks and they got to dress real nice and probably ate nice, but some of the Indian children wasn't that lucky. And the ones that dressed up, we were lived in a country where there was oil wells and a lot of the men uh, worked at the pump houses, I guess you call it, and they had a lot more money. But it seemed like the Indian people didn't get to do that. So we were pretty poor, but we had land. My mother's had her uh, land, uh, what do you call it? Uh, in, the allotment? Allotment. Yeah. My mother's allotment. Was, and it was close to highway. It was, uh, it was easy to get to. So many times we went down the highway to the school on the concrete. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, what, so you lived on your mother's original allotment Not, yes um from what tribal affiliation did your mom have then well it was a delaware and shawnee mm -hmm. but then uh, they put us on cherokee uh, cherokee nation cherokee Road. but anyway we actually my mother was shawnee and delaware okay what about your father he was creek okay so what do you consider your tribal affiliation then? Well, we had to have something, so I always said Cherokee and Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what, that was went on. Uh, that's what was on our uh, government papers from uh, uh, Muskogee. Okay. Anyway. So that was more your enrollment, but you also, I. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this recording that um, Noreen's daughter, Linda, is also with us. So if she, if there's questions that we have to ask and we're asking, that's who we're talking to. Or okay. Linda, I you're, whether I could say you're also or... completely able to okay. poke in there and say, hey, mom, don't you remember this? Okay, thanks. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um, but I was just thinking about it because I know uh, that's a complicated question. Um about uh, tribal affiliation versus where you're actually enrolled, it right? It is, because so many of the kids at Chilocco were, they were from around Tahlequah in the Cherokee country, but I was not uh, in that area. Mm -hmm. So, so many times they wonder, who was I kin to? And some of the employees that, that asked, who was I kin to that was back in the chair? Well, I didn't have any, I really, at the time, I didn't know anybody that was uh, Cherokee, where I was from and who I was kin to. 
Yeah. So it was really confusing. So toward the last, uh, through 11th and 12th grade, I just put down a creek. Because this was after my mother had passed away and my dad was still alive, so I just started using creek. Okay. You showed me that paper where that you had to show the school. That's the one that has your birth date on it. You said you had to show, you showed your father's roll number and you you had to show that to get into school. Oh, into Sulaco? Oh, well they, no, uh, yeah, well they had oh. agents. We had an agent in Tulsa. And uh, then at that time. This was before the agent. Did you go to a, was the school you went to in Sperry, was it a public school? Yeah, it was a public school. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't an Indian school. No. Right. No, she had to show this paper that showed her father's roll number and that she was he was the parent of her mm. and her birth date is, is March the 15th on that paper. And then later on in life when she got her uh, birth certificate, it actually listed March the 20th. Oh, okay. So we have her birth date and her government birth date. Yeah. You have two birthdays. I hope you celebrate yeah, both. I can Next do weekend. either one. <laughs> or both, more which importantly. Which one is him? Both. Well, uh, well so I let's maybe go back to, to your time in Sperry a little bit. Um, you talked a little bit sort of about the different class, class and just sort of relationships in the community, that there was a lot of oil industry going on. Oh, yes. There was lots of oil wells uh, in that area. And... Uh, in my time, they were already dug. There was not any cracking doing that I know of. But uh, I was born in 1928, which is the 20s wasn't so hot. But the worst was in the 30s when we had the dust bowl and we had dry. We'd have a rain for a long time and everything was dry. So only thing that my dad could raise was black-eyed peas and uh, peanuts. But we did have that, that we didn't have to take too much water for for the black eyed peas and the peanuts. So what was your dad a farmer or something else? Well, I guess he, everybody had to do that. They had to make be farmers just going to eat, you know. He was not uh, anybody else. He was just a farmer, I guess. Yeah. So, um... She actually talks more about her mother than her father. I was going to ask, do you want to tell a little bit about your parents in general? And about, do you have siblings? Oh, yes, there were five of us. I grew up, I was the middle one. Two older and two younger. Okay. I can so. tell she's already dry. What? You're licking your lip. So drink, finish drinking oh, all of that water. I'm, oh, I'm okay. Water. I'll do it when I get ready. She's my boss. She is your boss, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know her too well. <laughs> yeah, she wants to... Uh, she, she said they're licking her lips. So she, she wants to move to Oklahoma, and I said, if I moved to Oklahoma, she would never let me raise my head up. Probably she used to sit down and sit up. <laughs> she brought you here, at least. She's yeah. <laughs> editing this part out. She so. might try to she'll leave let, me. She'll let you talk. She'll try to leave me. Her mother's property had oil wells on it. Your mom's allotment property, their family property? At, yeah, the Texas company had, uh, I never did know when it, I was too young to know what was going on there, but they did mm. pull those wells out probably in the 30s. And uh, I, I don't know why they did it because other people's uh, wells kept going. The people that lived around us, a lot of their wells kept going. We never did know why to pull my mother's out. Oh, yeah. Did she have mineral rights to the to her land? Do you know? No, I don't know. But yeah. she did get a pension though until she died. They gave her so much money, and it had to come through the Indian office in Muskogee, hmm. and they'd send it to her. Yeah, so they was in control of what we had. <laughs> oh yeah. So maybe talk a little bit about your mom. What did she do? Um, what did she do when you were growing up? Took care of five kids. Mm -hmm. Cooked. Mm -hmm. Well, she she was the really the gardener. She made a garden, a nice garden, and she always grew sweet potatoes and and uh, corn, sweet corn, and Indian corn. 
uh, purple looking corn. She mm -hmm. used to grow that stuff. Now, of course, my dad, he, he did the corn fields and the cotton fields or whatever. Or whatever. But we had, my mother rented uh, the, the, some of the land that we couldn't uh, work ourselves, you know. So he, we would rent some of these acreage with cotton mm -hmm. and sometimes corn. I remember those cotton fields. Were, that we would go help pick cotton to earn some money. Man, it was usually hot in September when we was picking cotton. <laughs> was that you and all your siblings? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and sometimes we were, we'd try to lay in the shade of the cotton bushes. <laughs> it would be hot. We'd get in there and get on the bushes where the shade was in. Yeah. Um, well, so you said you... And you can, if there are things that you think about that you want to talk about from when you were younger, at any time you can always come back to that. But you said you were you were in Sperry until the eighth grade when you ended up in Shalako. Can you tell me about how you ended up going to Shalako? Well, my mother passed away in 1945. Mm -hmm. My older brother was in the Navy at that time, and so uh, my dad he drank quite a bit at that particular time, seems like. Every time he got, earned any money, he'd drink instead of bringing food home. But my mother made him bring, you know, she fussed at him. He had to bring some food home. And, uh... Tell her your mother didn't speak English. Oh, well, my mother didn't speak English. She spoke Shawnee. Did she, is that what she grew up speaking in the house? Uh-huh, yeah, she was from a Shawnee family, Spivokes. Did you speak Shawnee with her? No. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that we <laughs> we did as well as we did in school because my dad, though, was little. He had a better education. He went to some of the Indian missions back then. And, and a lot of people thought he was pretty well educated. They'd bring letters over to him to read and explain to him. Hmm. But my mother, she was full, but she didn't. She didn't learn to speak English. And I don't know how we, we just learned to know what was what, I guess. And you helped her with her, her, she was, you were assisting your mother with her banking, took her to the Oh yeah, houses. some, yeah, she, she yeah, she, she, uh, sometimes she'd get a check. Well, she always got the oil, oil to her, I guess. From the Texas company, and you know, she always had to go to, go to Tulsa to get them cashed. So I'd go with her and help her do that. How old were you when you did that? She, I don't like, know, I must like have tens been, or I probably was ten, yeah, eleven, ten, twenty, or something like that. Yeah. Um. So you'd been in school long enough to read and write. Oh yeah, English and all that. Yeah, we we got. A, I said, if you don't get it in elementary, you don't get it. You mentioned that your dad went to some Indian mission schools. Do you know which ones he went to? Well, he went to Shawnee Mission, and he went over to uh, uh, Ufala. They had a mission in Ufala, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that's where he went to start start out in Shawnee Mission. But he grew up where? He grew up around Shawnee. He grew up around Shawnee. Mm -hmm. Um. So your mom died in 1945. Mm -hmm. Um. And then your dad wasn't necessarily taking the care of you. It sounds like that he needed no, to be. He 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 was out drinking when the night she passed away. And you, she passed away in a Claremore Indian Hospital. But you know, back then, she, she I mentioned it. And she, we didn't have no running water, electricity, of course. But uh, she felt when it had these round, big round tubs that you wash clothes in. She was taking it out the back door, and I don't know if she slipped or something. Anyway, she fell over on that tub. And it bruised her. 
right in her chest. Mm -hmm. And she, she never went to a doctor or hospital or anything, and it turned into cancer. Oh. So uh, she probably suffered with that about at least nine months. And then she finally passed away of Claiborne. But it was back then, there was doctors. They weren't of any place around. Mm -hmm. They were at the war zones, I guess. <laughs> and, and transportation was, uh, oh, it was, uh, we just didn't have no transportation. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my aunt came and stayed with us when she was at the last. And she called and had them to, had an ambulance come out from Tulsa. They came out to the house. Oh, about 10, it was dark. I have something I always remember about her hat, the last we saw her at home, she said, took her off at night in that ambulance. And and my aunt, aunt Mary said to us, well, you kids can come up tomorrow and see her. You know, she didn't want us to go right then. So we thought we could go, I guess. But anyway, she went with my mother whenever she went to the hospital then. Mm -hmm. So after then, I... Uh, well, I had already, actually, I didn't say that in there, but in 1943 is when I got to go. You know, I babysit the agents, uh, two little kids uh, that summer before the, I went. And of course the BIA he, agent? Yeah. yeah. He, was, uh, he was real good, and she was too. She was, I think she was really from New Mexico or something. But anyway, they in, were both Indian. Did he live in Sperry? Who? The Indian agent? No, in Tulsa. Tulsa, okay. No, they lived in a, I mean, they, he had office up in one of the big buildings in Tulsa. So how did you start doing that? Huh? How did you get that job? Well, I, I just made my own application and sent it in, and I got approved. To go to Shalaka or to take care of his kids? Oh, oh well, I did that just for the summer, just for a while. I, I lost the track there. No, just through the summer. But anyway, uh, I got to go to, in uh, 1943, and I was just, what was that, 15, I think. You're, you're missing the key part. You, you shared with me how your mother recommended that you guys go to school or get an education. Well, yeah, she said that whenever we talked to her when she was, you know, she knew she wasn't going to be there very long, so... And I'd already been to, you know, Shilaka one year, so she uh, encouraged. My older sister did not finish high school. She just went through eighth grade, so she, she didn't want me to stop, uh, you know, like my uh, sister did. And uh, anyway, uh, I so how made, did, my, made, my own, made my own way. How did you hear about Shilaka? Oh, well, one of my cousins... Uh, my first cousin, she lived just a little ways from us. She went there in the 30s, but she recommended it. But there was a few other people around that uh, mentioned it. Mm -hmm. And that's how your mother learned about it? Or how did the, or did the Indian agent come around to your house? Oh, yeah, they always kept in touch with the Indians that they were in charge of. Key point in charge of. <laughs> you see, he's well. He's one of the tigers. Okay. <laughs> there was a lot of tigers back then. He was one of the tigers. So he was an Indian Indian agent. Yeah, he was. He's well, Cree. Yeah. He's Cree. <laughs> okay. So, well, not all Indian agents were Indians. Well, back then we had some. Now, when you were in OU, Ed Ed Moore was. Uh, he he went to Chicago. Then he was working at Muskogee. Oh, you, I don't know where you ever went over there with me when you were going to get ready to go to OU. But he went to school. Uh, there's several of the more, uh, the, the boys, there's several of the boys with school there, and Ed was one of the older ones. Ed Moore, okay. All right. But uh, share share with her what your mother's feelings were about She's supposed to be asking her questions. Changing the question. Yeah, but I know a few questions that will help her. So you were going to tell me, your mom, you had heard about Shalako because you had cousins and other just people you knew who'd gone there. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like your mother really wanted her kids to have an education. Because mm -hmm. she said that that's the only way it's going to be now. Because she come from 
Delaware on the East Coast, and she knew that the white people were encroaching on the Indians for several years. And her her people, her folks, her parents, they, they came through the wilderness and uh, from the East Coast, so she knew that the white way was will have to be the way in the future. Yeah. And so did did she was she born somewhere other than? No, she, she was, was born in Sperry. She yeah, well, the Sperry wasn't even there probably when well, she yeah she was uh, there. They, her family all lived in that area. But it sounds like her parents. Came from the east. Was it her parents oh, yeah. that came from the Grand, east coast? Yeah, right. her grandparents and her parents too. Her parents. And actually, they settled up in Kansas. And then the railroad. They were building railroads in Kansas at the time the the, the tribes were in uh, Kansas, and they had to move them down to Oklahoma, and, and they bought into the Cherokee Nation. So that's how we ended up on a Cherokee roll. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and we got a card. I have a card in my purse, a Cherokee. It's got your Cherokee uh -huh. tribal role. Okay, so you you were thinking education, and you might, you know, Shalaka was a bug because of that. Um, but it sounds like I'm hearing two things. You had a relationship with um, a BIA officer and his family, mm -hmm. and you decided independently, it sounds like, to put in an application to, I had to, to apply yeah, to mother, go to Shalaka. Yeah, of course, my mother did, did, couldn't do that. But Dad, I don't know, he wasn't too big on me going to school, too much that I can think of. Did he um, try and keep you from not going to school? No, I don't, I don't remember that he ever paid that much attention, really. Let me ask you something, because I'm not clear on this point. I know you, you first went to Shalaka. Um, was that before your mother... Was sick? Yeah, yeah, one year before, uh, then uh, when she got ill, I uh, stayed home that year. So uh, then later I went, that's when she, uh, she passed away. And then and since September, so I was a little late getting back to school. Okay. And I didn't have no money to go back anyway. But, but my neighbor across the highway from us, he gave me the money to get catch a bus and go back to school. Okay. So let me see if I understand this. You um, went to school for the first time in 1943 mm -hmm. in Chilocco and went in as like a, what would be now like a freshman in high school. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then it sounds like in 1944, you, you took off mm -hmm. to come home and take care of your mom. Yeah. 44 and, 45. and then after it, 45 went back after the start of the semester, but just. In a 10th grade then. I was in a 10th grade then. Okay, yeah. So you you okay. So you went back in forty five. You just had that year in between, and so let I help me. Um, back when you first went to Shalako, do you remember how did you get to campus? Do you remember the first time you oh, went yeah. to campus? Well, the government sends you the first time you go. They send you a free ticket. So uh, then you uh, the bus picked me up in Sperry. There was other kids going to school. This is kind of late in August. Everybody was going about the same time. So there were several on that bus. But they took us right to the uh, the campus and let us out there. But second time you went back, uh, you had a, you're on your own. You go back, you're on your own. So if you I leave to, and then come back, you're on your own yeah, to get back. So my neighbor paid for my bus ticket on back to one. school. When they when you took the bus the first time, did they drop you off in front of the arch, or did they take you up in the oh, middle we of campus? Oh, we went up to the, up to the buildings. Well, we had our luggage. You know, we couldn't get <laughs> lug our luggage. But the, there's one good thing about it: some of the guys on the campus they drove, they could drive, and they had the they had government cars uh, on the campus, and they would come and. Uh, <laughs> Well, there was a there's a railroad went down through Kirk, New Kirk and and uh, toward Ark City. They used to call it the Doodle Bug. It was a short train from Hominy, and uh, but you that you they let you off at that Doodle Bug that train it, station that is, and then they uh, call out the campus to come get us. So 
And at that time, second time you go back, but first time they took us right up to the campus. You got a chartered bus, huh? Mm -hmm. Straight up. Do you remember what you felt like, or do you remember your reaction when you went when you went to campus the first time? Oh yeah, well it was uh, so different. I, it's it's hard to explain. Of course, I I kind of grew up around Tulsa too, and I so I kind of knew a little bit about the larger buildings, nothing like they are now. But anyway, but I thought it was more like a college. You know, with all the all the big buildings, and we had a beautiful campus. Have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was beautiful when I first went there, and uh, you know, I guess we worked for worked our way in a way because there's always some of the guys had to keep the cam campus cut down, yeah. and the flower beds made up nice. Trim trees. I mean, you know, they they learned to do that too. The boys got more advantage just than us ladies did, well, as girls. <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. Like, what do you think their advantages were compared to what the girls were doing? The boys. Mm -hmm. Well, they had different trades. They had printing. And they had uh, lect uh, the lect power plant operation has electricity. They had auto mechanics and. Uh, They'll say printing, yeah, auto mechanics, and then some learn to uh, make a sh They had shoes. We made yeah. <laughs> shoe covers, and then they made horse uh, horse collars and things like with leather. Mm -hmm. And of course, I guess some of the people worked uh, worked the yards. Did they have um, Did they have plots that they could work on their own? They have like agricultural plots that they could, like their own space, they could grow things. The boys, I can't remember if that time. Well, we, the agriculture, they plant big. Yeah. They didn't have a spot. They had fields. So they were working general school <laughs> oh, towards yeah, the, the general. Agriculture, yeah. that's, that was agriculture yeah. school. Um, so that's what the boys got to do. So what, how was that different or why was that an advantage to what the girls got to do? Well, we had to act like ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't do just anything. We had to wear dress, <laughs> dresses all the time. But oh, we got to learn uh, how to sew. We mm -hmm. had to learn how to cook, and we had to take care of little little kids at the nursery school. And learn how to take care of little kid, babies and kids. And uh, during the war, we we did work the poultry. Now, see that school grew it. We got our own eggs and chickens there. And uh, the boys, of course, they planted lots of things. They worked the fields and then had to go uh, grow them and pick them next spring. Well, anyway, they had to go through all that. But then they had the the cows and horses. They they really had a lot more to do than we did. Do are, do you feel that way because they were more busy, or because the skills that they were learning were? No, applicable different in different ways like they could use them different in life mm -hmm. yeah yeah so many well the boys worked bakery too I know women, women didn't get to do it at the kitchen and the bakery the guys did it mm -hmm. but there are several guys after they left school and graduated they worked bakeries they had jobs some of them worked in kitchens we, we had big pots of stuff uh, to you know worth the big pots that they cooked in and uh, if you happen to go through the kitchen in the evenings, those guys would set this uh, frozen eggs out. And it looked like a big hunk of cheese. <laughs> we didn't get fried eggs. <laughs> we got uh, scrambled eggs. So they set that out at night by morning. I guess they cooked those scrambled eggs. <laughs> and during the war, we, our potato, well, now this is... A, a, when I was years after then, when I was about in the 12th grade, 11th, I said. But anyway, our potato peeler broke down. It's still during the war and you couldn't get re repair parts or anything. Anybody would come repair them. But uh, so some of us older girls, had, at 5 o'clock in the morning, we had to go over and peel potatoes oh for the whole goodness. school. So you did have one of those that sort of, that manual or the... Uh that sort of electronically peeled the potatoes and it broke? 
Yeah, some part to it broke, and they couldn't uh, get it fixed the whole time I was there. They didn't. They might ho hope they did later, but <laughs> yeah, because it took a while to get things back, back uh, where you can get things fixed or get yeah. parts for anything. Did you did girls work in the kitchen besides that? No, we worked the dining room. We had to keep the tables clean after the the meals, and we had to sweep the floor. We put the chairs up on the table and sweep. We had, we had to sweep really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after you sweep, then you put them back down. Then uh, uh, during the meal time, where the guys put from the kitchen brings these hot pans out or the food out like a cafeteria. And then we had to serve the food. You give spoon food and spoon here, you know. <laughs> we got to, you didn't get to go back for seconds. You got a good man. So we had to do that. Then we had to clean up uh, all the mess afterward. And then we had big dishwashers and where we washed the silverware. Well, we had to put those things away. So like I say, it was work, but I guess we, we were learning how to work at that time because we didn't have anything like that at home. Mm -hmm. We didn't hardly have any water to wash our dishes. <laughs> or fire to heat up the, heat up the water. Yeah. But anyway, we, you learn lots. So when you go out in the world, you can, you know, whatever you do, you kind of know a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Did you get to eat the leftover food? Leftover? No, I don't think. We might <laughs> cookies from the bakery or something. What about the coffee? Oh, well, that's the, that came after the veterans came. We didn't ever get to drink coffee but until the veterans came, and then it provided coffee for them. So if you worked in a kitchen or the dining room, and after the, they, after the breakfast time, if there's any left in their big pots, the coffee pots, we could drink it, or we did. <laughs> 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 was the coffee just for the veterans then? Yeah, it was oh. during the meal time. Yeah, the rest of us couldn't couldn't drink the coffee. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So if we worked in there, we'd go help ourselves to what's <laughs> left in the pots. <laughs> Finish that off. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to get back a little bit when you were when you were young and you first came to campus. Did you um, do you remember being assigned to your dorm? Did you have roommates? Oh yeah, I had eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what home were you? What home were you assigned home to? Home three. Then? Home three was the young ones. Yeah. And we, our basement, where we had to go downstairs to go to the restroom, and we had to take our showers down the basement. And it sometimes wasn't very warm. It was cold. Mm -hmm. And then we had clean pots too, the toilet toilets pots, I guess you call it. Yeah. Well, anyway, we had to. Well. We had details, but we didn't have to do it all the time. We were assigned a certain time, like six weeks doing this and doing that. We had to clean the toilets. And uh, like I say, we had to keep our own buildings clean. Everybody had details. And we had some uh, some of the smart, popular ones got to be room, ma room matrons, or they helped the room matrons. They, they helped to keep us in order. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so that uh, we had we had to get on our details or we'd get in trouble. So when you, it sounds like you were rooming, you were in one of the rooms with seven other girls. Mm -hmm. So you were all were in bunk beds. Is that mm -hmm. right? Were you in bunk beds or were you in, everybody have their own oh, twin yeah, bed? Oh, we all had our own beds. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you, uh, did you? Do you remember meeting the other girls for the first time? Did any of them know each other? Did you know any of them? They might know one another, but they didn't know me, and I didn't know them. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that? Hmm, well, I don't know. I, I adjust pretty good, except uh, some of the group leaders, uh, they, they made sure we get up early in the morning, and that used to get me because they could throw the covers off of you. And it would be cold up there on the third floor in a dorm. The dorm was never really warm. But anyway, they'd throw the blankets uh, back off of you so you'd get up or wake up. Mm -hmm. And I, that kind of aggravated me. <laughs> I was a morning sleeper anyway. <laughs> it is. 
I was about to say, sounds like from everything I've learned about you, you still are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's, well, eventually, that's when we first got there. Eventually, we were assigned to rooms and different roommates. I guess you figured out uh, who would be good best for our, for our roommates. Was that the same year, the oh, first year that oh, yeah. you all got yeah, moved yeah, around later on? Yeah. Um, then we just had one roommate then. So it was two to each room? But you know, across from the matron, so there was one it's big okay. room, and there were the little the little ones. I don't know why they seemed like the little kids had room for the little kids across from the, the hall, from our matron. What age were the little ones you're talking about at that point? Well, <laughs> well, you know, before I went up there, they had seventh and eighth graders. Mm -hmm. Well, time I got there in ninth grade, there were some leftover seventh graders. They were younger than us, and they were smaller. So, but they were a mess. They were a mess. They were. They was always a, going upstairs, sleeping with somebody else, and we wasn't supposed to do that. We were supposed to stay in our room and go yeah. to sleep nine yeah. o'clock at every night. But anyway, those kids were a mess. All those little ones, and they had a bunch of them in that dorm. Why do you think that they were? I don't know how to even categorize it. Maybe not mischievous. Why do you think that they were more of a mess than the bigger kids? It was like trying to keep in a room full of little mice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you... Actually, they turn out the lights and they think the matrons sleep or something. And they wouldn't stay in their rooms. Did they get caught very often? Sure. Yeah, they did. The roommate, yeah. the tattletales would find out about it. The, the girls that take care of their uh, see after our yeah. room. They had uh, so many girls on each room, and we were kind of responsible for the, for the... And the first year, we had two trainees. Oh, yeah. Two uh, girls that were older. They were training to... Be... Matrons, matrons. I guess, or in charge. But, it, yeah, they, they were there, too. Huh. So what do you remember your matron from that time when mm -hmm. you first got there? Oh yeah. Do you remember who it was? Yeah, it's Miss Robinson. Miss Robinson was your matron. Uh -huh. I saw her on a. They were, and I thought, my gosh, she was smiling. I couldn't <laughs> believe she was smiling. We were. I'll put that in context. We were watching the Oklahoma Historical Society. Someone has donated a, like a home home movie from 1947 of, um, one of the school's picnics. And I saw her. Noreen saw her old matron and was really shocked that she had a big smile on her face. Yeah. I think it took you a second to recognize her because you weren't used to seeing her. Yeah, she looked like she had something on her head. Yeah, yeah. it was a funny hat. Yeah. Um, well, so um, so that's sort of my question because you know I don't I don't know how it was. You've talked a little bit about how it was to move from your house in, in Sperry that you grew up with and to the campus in Shalako and it was, you know, it was bigger, but it was also, there was more modern things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But moving from a house where, um, you know, you have a mom that's just giving you attention and your mm -hmm. siblings mm -hmm. to moving to a, a place which you're in a massive building with a lot of other girls and you have one matron for that building and then, you know, sort of different people are helping her, but, um, do you remember how you felt about that? Did you, was that comfortable for you? Was it an adjustment? I expected a lot of that. I've heard that, you know, about what it's like. And they used to see when my cousin went there back in the early 30s, I think, they had the military type people there. So when we were there, it was not different. We didn't have to march around, but we had to stay on the sidewalk, not get on the grass. I have heard that so much. Yeah, <laughs> and, that was, and you know, those group leaders would yell at us if we, they seen us step off in the grass. And <laughs> they were thought they were boss, I guess. <laughs> they were helping their matron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we couldn't walk on the grass. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. A lot, so many people remember that part of it. it really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, and it's funny. It you know when you, it, it when a lot of people go back for the reunion on the campus. Sure. I still, 
have a hard time getting off the grass. Mm -hmm. Either that or it's gleeful to mm -hmm. get off, mm -hmm. off onto the grass. Oh, yeah. Um, well, so that, that helps me. So you, you, you had sort of, it was, you, they had described to you what to expect. So you were sort of mentally prepared mm -hmm. on what you were walking mm -hmm. into. Um, do you remember if it was um, an easy transition for you or were there things that you liked and didn't liked? Well, it's fairly easy. I enjoyed, uh, there was just several young folks like this too, you know, so we, we got along pretty good. Yeah, except he's always yelling at you if you get off the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, mornings, well, we had to come down. We had to go to breakfast or else, and some of the girls would slip out the back door so they wouldn't have to go to breakfast. Well, I like to have breakfast. Time you were you you working and you and we had to walk everywhere or run if you was late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that camp was pretty good size, so you you ready to eat. That so, makes sense. I didn't have any trouble having some food. I ate whatever they had. Um, do you remember any uh, teachers or classes that you had? Were any, any that sort of stick out to you? Well, uh, in the ninth grade, this is in 43, I had uh, this English teacher. He was a Cherokee. And... Uh, I think when I went back in 10th grade, there was another guy, he, Mr. Thorne, he was a Cherokee. So, you know, you kind of have, have you kind of relate if you saw that they were Indian, too. And our the lady at the laundry, she was a Potawatomi. She was light, she, light colored, but she she was really a nice person. And we, she, we had to iron those shirts. They take them right out of the extractor, and and, and we had to arm them dry, mm -hmm. and we and we had to show them to her before we she'd let us do another one, or and they'd come off the uh, big machines, and we folded sheets and folded towels. Yeah. You know, we well of course at home we didn't do that. My mother took care of all that, I guess, but we had to learn a lot of that. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm curious just because of, of something you just said, but did you, did you feel more comfortable with the, the teachers and the people who worked there that were Native American? Well, yeah, I guess so. I, 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 I was kind of used to the white people too at Sperry. There weren't too many Indians when at school there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, it didn't bother me any. But maybe I felt a little, might have felt a little more, I uh, can think, but a little uh, easier with the Indians. But our matrons weren't Indian. They were white people. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that that is? What? Did you get much thought to? Like, why were there? Because yeah. it seems like you mentioned three people who were Indian. That there was the educate the, in the education building. Yeah, they we had regular educated education subjects. Yeah, like English and math and science and all those. Yeah. and we had a music teacher. Yeah, too, and we had a music teacher at Sperry. I learned a lot of my basic music oh, nice. at Sperry because yeah. we had a, a music teacher there. Um, were you encouraged to um? to sort of talk about um, like Indian cultural topics or were you encouraged to, um, I'm trying to think, sort of talk about things you'd done at home? I mean, like, was there, was there encouragement to sort of embrace your Indian heritage or? or... Well, everybody went to school there. If you wasn't Indian, you didn't go there. So you you know you had a lot of Indian children your age and yeah. older and some younger. So you all talked quite a bit about where you were from no, with each other. No, we did not. You know, I didn't know what a lot of the, the tribes some of them were. You know, we just never. I never did know. But you could see after a while, most of the Cherokee kids sort of favored one another. Then the Creek kids would they. As, you know, and I found out they went to, a lot of those Creek kids, we had, they went to church. 
some of them's dad was preachers, and I, well, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know too much about the Creek side of the family, and I, you know, found out uh, that uh, she, they were smart, some of them a lot smarter than I was. I guess that's why they was very smart. I was dumb. I bet that wasn't, wasn't my true. fault. I bet that wasn't true. Uh, well, <laughs> you, are you saying that you think they had more education before? Some of them did. Than you? Some of them were less, but... Yeah. So, um, that's a good question, because you mentioned church. You know, was was there a lot of people who went to church that were on campus there? I don't know how... See, they had Catholics. The Catholics had a separate church. They went at They're different on campus. times. Yeah. Yeah. And Miss Robinson was a Catholic. She took she took those Catholic kids in her under her wing. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, then the rest of us, we had a, I think he was a Baptist preacher out of Ark City, came out there and uh, for, for us, the rest of us. Sometimes uh, it would be pretty, several, pretty much there. Then some Sundays, everybody's lazy. I think my dinner after we had our dances <laughs> Saturday night. Saturday night dances. <laughs> and if nobody came down to go to church, her matron used to get angry at us and she'd make everybody go. She'd call everybody out of the, out of the halls in her room and make everybody go to church. Oh uh, I she was going to be a boss or else. <laughs> uh-huh. Did you grow up going to church? No. No, my mother didn't go to church. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, she couldn't read the Bible if she had one. So how did you feel about being made, sort of made to go to church while you are at Shilako? Well, I just went along with the rest of the group. I yeah. didn't, didn't know anything about it for a long time. What are some of the things that you all did for entertainment? You mentioned dances. What else did you all well, do? Well, one Saturday night and the next Saturday, uh, next weekend, we had movies at the school building in October. We had movies. Most of them were pretty, back then, were pretty uh, up-to-date movies we used to have. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, we d- did things like that on Saturdays. And then we had the Flaming Era. They, uh, it was just, it was a place, and it was in the girls' gym. We had a Nickelodeon there. We had music. You could play music. And then on the end, they had a little store there, I guess a store, where they you can buy pop or peanuts or chips or whatever to munch on. This this is usually, uh, you could go there after we eat our evening meal. We could be over there. I'm, I can't remember it's, uh, whether it's one hour or two hours, but we could uh, socialize with the, the other kids uh, to get together at this flaming arrow. Mm-hmm. Did you, uh, you mentioned being able to buy snacks and stuff. Um, were you able to earn money at school? Sometimes we did. Doing what sort of things? Well, I, I worked in uh, different uh, employees' homes. I uh, used to work in Miss Hollowell's house. I did, uh, I worked in her house. Of course, I was senior then. Then I even did some earning for Mrs. Grell. She was the postmaster then, and she, she you know, so I, I did some earning for her and some house cleaning, and they paid you, you know, three dollars a week. Back then, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'd buy a lot of pop for three dollars then. Yeah, and that was your superintendent's wife. Yeah, right? and then where the Miss Hollowell was, she was, you know, she was a homemaking teacher, I think. And then she was in charge of the poultry. You know, the guy that was supposed to be in charge of the poultry was, he had to go to the service during the war, so Miss mm-hmm. Hollowell. And I can't think where else she worked. Probably in a homemaking building. We had several homemaking teachers. She probably was there. And What did you, um, do you remember how you felt about um, Ellie Carell as a superintendent? Did you have much interaction oh. with him? 
Well, yeah, he was out around. Uh, he he was he didn't stay to himself. He was pretty nice, and you know, my husband. I, of course, I married. Uh, my husband was from Chicago, but we went by to see him uh, years after we were out of school. We went by our city to see them. We visited them, but see, uh, the last year. I was up there. He couldn't hardly talk, you know. He had he had a p little pad that he'd hand you a pencil and pad. You had to, uh, he'd write this down, and then if he, I don't know, he was just getting old, <laughs> so he had a little, little tablet to write on. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he was a really a nice person. He was up there for years and years, probably at least thirty years. But we had a lot of other superintendents that didn't last that long. Mm -hmm. Um, what well, I'd heard he, uh, got to know the students, was known for getting to know the students on a personal level, so it seems like he, he, you felt like he came and talked to you all and got oh, to know you. Oh, Mr. Krell? Yeah. yeah, he yeah. did. And, uh, he was, like, he was out there at picnic ground, he didn't stay home, he, he was out there with the rest of us. Yeah. And, uh. One time, I, I, I was an errand girl a lot, and uh, <laughs> I went into the main office, and I was sneaking in there real quiet, and I looked in his office and said, are you busy? He said, I try to stay busy. <laughs> <laughs> but I always remember, I was real quiet. I was a little bit bashful yet then. <laughs> Uh, I guess I had to go into some reason or other. I don't remember. <laughs> Are oh, you funny. busy? I try to stay busy. That's funny. <laughs> that's oh, well. So um, there's two. So I wanted to ask you about two things. One, um, what it was like taking that year off. So you know, do you remember how you felt when you found out you had to go home to take care of your mom and you weren't going to be able well, to go back? Well, I, I I finished it ninth grade and I went home you know you go home for the summer okay but then that's when she uh, got uh, she did the wash oh was she actually yeah, yeah yeah had her accident and then uh, she didn't feel too good I remember Christmas time she went somehow or other she cut her hand and it bled and bled I mean that just course then you didn't go off to looking for a doctor or a hospital or something you know you just right. had to deal with it but then she uh, as she's already had that bruise on her that bruise was there for a while and it was yeah. not taken care of yeah and then in the later in the spring she couldn't use her arm oh. that had it, it did something to her arm so she yeah. was always holding that arm up yeah so anyway, I didn't go. I didn't want. But my older sister, she was good for nothing, anything. She couldn't do anything. She she was married. And if she came out to help with mother, she always fell asleep at night. She couldn't spend a night. She always fell asleep. But we right at the last we somebody set up with her, you know. Oh yeah. So uh, her husband would set up sometimes. How much older? Is your sister than you? Six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. um, so you went home during the summer after your ninth grade year, and then you you went decided back. to stay home and help your mom, mm -hmm. or it was decided that you'd stay home and help your mom. Did mm -hmm. you have any other siblings living at home at that time? Yeah, I had a younger sister and a younger brother. They were both at home. Mm -hmm. How old were, were they in comparison to you? Do you remember? Uh, let's see. They were born... Three and four years old. They were real close. Three and four years. They were younger. Little. Yeah. Yeah. So did you help take care of them then that year? Mm, probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had a peach. We had peaches, peach trees, and we had lots of peaches when my mother was sick, and she could. I end up cook, uh, canning a lot of those peaches. They, you know. You, you, you can can peaches real easy yeah. and keep them so but now it's kind of like beans and 
other things. The green beans, you had to use a processor. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't have one of those canning processors, so but you can can fruit. We had berries. You know, one thing about we did have some things on our farm, our land, like we had berries and we had plums and we had peaches besides our garden. It made good gardens in that area. Yeah. So you, you stayed home with your mom that year, and then your mom passed away in September. Um, did you, were you ex excited to go back to Shilako? Did you think about doing anything else? <laughs> no? I didn't know what I, I could do. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no money, no car. And I, I had to. And the later my, uh, well, that year, I guess my mother passed away. My younger sister went to Shilako. She was, was up there before I was. So I, she went on up there in August, and then I, I didn't go to almost about the 1st of October. So your younger sister started Shilako in her ninth grade year in August mm -hmm. when you came back to start your sophomore in September. Mm -hmm. So you were there together. Okay. Yeah, we weren't in the same building. She's in home four and I was in home five. Yeah. Did she go because of you? <laughs> well, we were so poor. We didn't have nothing to eat. <laughs> we didn't have anything. No, my, you think my dad would do the laundry? Well, I had that just a, about a half a mile. This there was a house, and she had this 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 lady had a laundry uh, house in the back in the back of their house, and where people didn't have long uh, machines in. So that laundry was busy. Mm -hmm. That's where I took a lot of the laundry up there. And you know, one time uh, I worked there for a little bit. She gave me ten dollars a week for taking care of the. What you had to do is wash out the. When somebody got through washing the machine, you wash them out and you wash a the tub and then put fresh water in there. And back then, people had new starch. We had to make starch for the different people that wanted starch. But I worked at that laundry for a little while, mm -hmm. and I took our own home laundry over there. But my mother couldn't do no more then, and then my dad sure didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the younger ones, but see, uh, my uh, sister, Tinny, she was uh, old enough to go to Shilako, but my little brother wasn't. Well, he went went to Sperry School, but I, I don't know how he ever made it. I think the neighbors and his friends helped him a lot, but it, at least he was within walking distance at the school, mm -hmm. or if you get, you could, we had a bus that went by there. If you get out there and catch a school bus, and you could ride into town, mm -hmm. but it did go around. We li we lived closer to town than, yeah. they, that bus would go south and yeah. east, west and back, it went clear around. But if you could catch it, you had time to. My I, question too about your sister is, did she choose to go to Shilako because she had heard about it from you? Because oh, yeah. there were there was other places she probably could have applied to go through the BIA office. Yeah, she probably could. And I always wondered, th I, I, well, back then you don't know. You don't have nobody speaking for you unless the Indian agent. If you have to talk to him, you can talk to him or tell him what you need or something. No, I wish he had gone to an Indian school. Because I don't think he fit, and you know what? He was smart. Both my brothers were smart, and they could write. Their hand writing was really good. But uh, then he joined the Navy when he was probably at least 17, I imagine. Your I younger I, brother, like yeah, your older brother, did? Yeah, he went in the Navy. He was in the Navy for 18 yeah. years. Both of your brothers went into the Navy? Mm -hmm. So this was my other question for you. You've mentioned this a little bit, but I'd like to hear more about being in Shilako when um, when the war, World War II disrupted, you know, there was a lot of students who left campus and went and served um, time in the military mm -hmm. during the war and then came back. Some mm -hmm. of them came back. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, how that felt to be a student at that time when they were leaving and coming back and did that change things or? 
Well, it didn't for me. <laughs> well, but so when you first went, I think there was, let me see, you went in 43. So there were probably already a lot of students who had been drafted or, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, they were. So, but when you came back in 45 and were there in 46 and 47, were they starting, were some of those students starting to come back to campus? Not, not 46, more like 47. Well, I guess they were 46 too. Yeah, I think Albert came back in the fall, in the spring. Yeah, I think, well, my brother-in-law went to Chilaco too. Anyway, uh, they came back in the spring of 46. No, 47. Then they came on up to Chilaco that fall. They came back in the spring of 47. 47. Uh-huh, 47. But, and they, they had them all in a different building than the younger boys. Mm -hmm. So they were sometimes in their early 20s by that point. Some of the guys that had been drafted oh, yeah. and came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, so here, I'm curious, um, did that change the way that campus felt any, or did that change things for you day to day to have sort of this new population come to campus? No, not for me. I think, think some of the girls really fell for some of those guys, but I didn't. Nobody paid any attention to me. Wait, you married somebody. Well, that was a while. <laughs> <laughs> that was a while afterward. But, well, he, you know, he used to, uh, he always showed that he cared about me, but he was not the lovey-dovey person, you know, like some kids are. <laughs> There's always kissing you or hanging, holding on to you or something. But he did. But whenever we had any basketball games or something, he always come up and sit by me. And my girlfriends, we we go together from the dorm over to the boys' gym. And, and but he always comes up there and sits whenever he got. You know, he always showed that he cared about me. But you know, like I say, he, so. Uh, then there were different ones kept teasing me about him. But then I, there was other guys too that, uh, <laughs> there was one guy who, boy, they liked to dance. <laughs> one of them, he had one eye. And the, everybody was, girls would tease me, How, which, which eye you think he's looking at up or something, you know, because he had something wrong with one eye. And they would just tease me something. Everybody's always teased me about somebody. So how did you, what would a typical date look like in Chilaco? A like, date? Yeah. How did you go out with boys? Because you're, you know, you talked about going to dances and yeah, girls falling yeah, for yeah, yeah, these guys was. coming back. How'd you, how'd you date? Well, uh, we just went, uh, all the girls would go and then the way, everybody just went on their own whenever they wanted to. Then it got together at the gym. For the dance? Yeah. But what if a, what if a guy wanted to get have some alone time with you, like go out and get to know you a little bit better, what would you do? Well, we had the uh, flaming arrow to it. We got together every evening, and on Sunday evenings, we got to stay a little longer uh, at the flaming arrow, but you could just sit around and just hang out and dance or whatever. <laughs> your daughter just showed me a picture of your husband, and I can... Well, that was my brother-in-law, that other one, too. He married my oh, younger right sister. Other, See, my yeah. younger sister did not finish. He introduced Is him. that the 1947 yearbook? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My uncle introduced him. All right, so we are, we're back from a short break. Um, so I'm just going to recap a little bit. And then, so we've talked a little bit just about your general Shalako experience and then coming back, um, being on campus with your sister, uh, for the second time. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, you actually uh, meeting your future husband because um, you referenced that a few mm -hmm. minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, other other little things about your experience there and a little bit about what you've done since. So mm -hmm. maybe let's start with um, meeting your husband. So it sounds like he um, was uh, at war Right, so he was active during during World War Two. What part of the military was he in? Army. So he was in the yeah, army. He's in was, and he was in Shilako before he 
I didn't know him, but I used to hear people speak about him. Okay. Because I didn't know him at that time. Was he part of the National Guard unit there no, on campus? No, he wasn't. No, he he wasn't. was drafted. Okay. Okay. So you'd, you'd heard about him. So he was part of the group that came back in the spring of 1947. Yes. Um. So how did you get to know him? Well, uh, uh, you probably have heard this, that we got to go to Arkansas City once a month. And I didn't have any money, but, and my sister said, well, go, she said, go ahead and go. She said, and Walter should buy us our lunch. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went on ahead with no money at all. We went on, a, uh, they had our bus in Texas out there. And uh, so we met at this particular cafe that's there. I don't remember the name of it now, but anyway, in this cafe, we met him. Albert and Walter was both standing there, I mean sitting there, drinking their beer in this restaurant. And anyway, we went, found them where they sat. And that's how I first, I've seen him on campus, but I didn't ever have this personal uh, uh, thing about it. But anyway, we, that's where so we who, met. So who was Walter? My brother-in-law. So he was your sister's boyfriend at that time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then he was friends with Albert. With Albert. Yeah. Well, anyway, Walter was in the Navy, but Albert was in the Army. But they all they were in the same home, yeah. so they all kind of got acquainted with one another. So that's where you met him. So how did you start well, dating him? Oh well. Other than so, him sitting next to you at the basketball games. Well, he's always thought he had to take me to all the parties. Did he ask you? No. Sometimes he didn't. He just show up. Yeah, you know, he just show up. Anyway, uh, what maybe. if you had another date? Huh? What if you had another date planned? Well, I did a time or two. <laughs> I did at our graduation. I was supposed to be with this other guy that asked me, and then Walter. I mean Albert. No, this was his year. His year for his graduation. Yeah. But he came and got me, and his his resident probably was a prom. But I come downstairs, and there was Albert. And I'd already told this other guy. His name was Gilbert. Uh, he was supposed to, and I thought, oh my gosh, here's Albert. Well, Albert, he said he thinks he owns me by that time. He <laughs> so what'd you do? <laughs> I went with Albert. <laughs> Poor Gilbert. What'd you tell him? Uh, well, I never did see him. <laughs> I don't know whether I don't know whether he showed up late or not, but some of the kids did that. They they did. well, there used to be a word they call it. Uh, what do you call it? When they, they go with somebody else, and they, anyway, that that's what happened there. And then uh, let's see. I think, oh yeah, when, during, uh, uh, whenever I was graduating, Albert didn't come up, and I really wanted him to come see me graduate, but he couldn't afford it. He was in Dallas, and he didn't have much money, so he didn't get to come. So uh, anyway, this other guy was supposed to take me to the prom and uh, senior activities, and, uh, and John and go and, and Albert's brother showed up. They had finished, I think, his brother finished in 46 and Shawnee go finished in 47. But they got they got on campus. Well, John thought he was he's just going to take me, and he did. Is that <laughs> Albert's John, brother? No, no, John. Albert's brother's name was Calvin Buck, but they called him Buck. But anyway, uh, they came on campus. So John, John Shawnee go, he, he, uh, end up taking me to the prom that time. So, oh, I never could stand to see the other guy after the end. I didn't afraid I'd have to say something or he'd say something. Oh, gosh. I just ignored him. That's <laughs> a awful. small group of people. But the thing is, he hadn't been, uh, he had not been my friend, but I think he must have been in service. He went back yeah. on curb campus very long. Yeah. So, but anyway, I kind so, of felt bad about some of them. So after Albert graduated, were you all trying to still see each other? Were you talking? Were you sending letters? Well, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't much of a writer, and he couldn't even spell Tulsa half the time. He put it Tulus. He wasn't, you know, he went to country school, and they did not teach them very good 
in these little country schools. But anyway, he couldn't spell too good. Neither did Buck. I used to see Buck's letters that he used to write to the girls when they was in service. Oh, well, you couldn't hardly, we'd say, hey, what this look like? Well, she says, we try to figure out what his letters were like, you know, his, his writing was so bad. Well, ours wasn't much better, but he always had the odd way of letting me know that he cared about me. So he, uh, he went home and stayed there for one summer, or he helped his brother-in-law put a field of corn in or something. But anyway, he came on in to, came to Dallas because he knew a good guy from McAllister. He, I, I think he was on his way to California because his other brother lived out there and he was going to go out there where Joe was at. But then he, he stayed here and went to electrical school. But he had to get that through the GI, GI, whatever, yeah. uh, education thing. But yeah, the he, GI Bill. Yeah. So he, he went to school, to electrical school. And when I graduated, I, I went to, well, I had to go, I went home with my younger sister. She had, she and Walter had married. So I went home with her. I didn't have but $3 when I finished 12th grade. And that's from working in one of the homes for $3 that week. Oh gosh. <laughs> $3 a week. So I went to Tulsa and for a while I worked in a drugstore. I worked there before and they hired me back. So I worked in a drugstore and then one, one lady, I was with one of my girlfriends. Well, let's go it. My older sister, she like I say, she wasn't much on anybody. But anyway, she wanted me to come and help her pay the rent where she was renting at. What is that? Just showing her dad. Oh, that's not a good picture of me. Uh, there's some better ones. I forgot what. So you went went back with a friend. Your sister was living in Tulsa, and she wanted me to come down and help her pay the rent, and and she was gonna give me a place to live. Well, in the meantime, my dad has sold our my mother's land, which we should have gotten, but we didn't. You know, there was no will or anything back then, so he got he got half of everything, and the other half we had to divide up in five ways, so we didn't get very much. Uh, anyway, it. Uh, I put mine in a bank there in Tulsa, and I think it's a little over hundred dollars. I thought it was a lot of money, but anyway, I put it in the bank, and I just lived on my what I worked. And then my one of my girlfriends from Chilocco, she she and I roomed together. At first, she was up. This was a long time ago, we had uh, rooming houses. Mm -hmm. You just rent rooms, and uh, anyway, she was upstairs. So when her girlfriend got married, she roomed downstairs with me. So we shared the rent there. And then uh, we went to the corner store. We had kitchen privileges. We went to the little corner store and bought some stuff to uh, eat. <laughs> At school, we didn't get to have, I like fried eggs with uh, and with uh, potatoes and tom and all that's good stuff, you know. So that's what we do. We'd have breakfast on weekends. She worked at Crest's, and I got a job at uh, the phone company. And that lady at the, at the store, she told me, she said, "Why don't you put an application in the phone company?" Oh, I didn't even know. You know, they were hiring or anything. So that put a bug in my ear to go with that. So that's what I did. And I had to take a spelling test. And I passed all of the spelling except Pittsburgh. But there's different ways you spell Pittsburgh. So that's she let me buy on that one because it was different uh, ways to spell Pittsburgh. But I made all, all I was a good speller. <laughs> I learned how to spell it. Was, were the things that you learned at Shalako helpful for you after you left? Oh, sure, basic education. We got that basic in elementary school. Yeah. Our math and spelling and reading and all that stuff. Yeah, we got all that. You're basic, but then when you went to Shilako and you talked about some of the skills that you had to, to learn. Well, but... well, we still had uh, we still had math and English and uh, what else we had? Science, biology, we had biology. Mm -hmm. And then we had music and gym. We had gymnasium. Yeah. We did things in gym. You got to well, work in different departments. You yeah. had that photo of you working in the health department. You got ex 
in Chilocco. You got oh. to go to the different departments. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I worked at Dining. I worked every place in four times, four years. You work everywhere there. Yeah. I worked in a dining room two or three times. I worked at the hospital. I worked in the laundry. And I was... Uh, Daycare. Uh, Superintendent's office. She, the errand girl. I was an errand girl, and then my senior year, I worked two semesters in a principal's office in the education department. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and so I think, from what I understand, after your mom died, you stayed summers over at Shilako. Just No, it was just the first summer, uh, I mean, uh, first summer after my mother passed away because I was late to going to school. I didn't get to school till about 1st of October. Right. So I, instead, uh, it's not passing, they let me make it up. So that's where I learned to cannon and we froze vegetables. You have to uh, steam them and then cool them and then pack them. Then we uh, cut up chickens and we froze chickens for the freezer. We did think, I mean, you learn from these. It's yeah. not a book learning, right. but you learn a lot right. of things. So instead of having to go the, retake the year, they just let you stay longer. Yeah. yeah so the, the, summer. the next year, did you go to Tulsa? During the summer, then? Let me see, that would have been... No, I went back to school. Between sophomore and junior, you stayed during the summer at Shilako. Mm -hmm. Between junior and yeah. senior year, did you stay at Shilako too, or did no, you go somewhere else? I went to, I went to Tulsa. You went to Tulsa? Yeah, I worked okay. in a drugstore there, downtown Tulsa. Okay, so after, and then after you graduated, you went back to work there for a little while. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah, Got it. You go back where you're familiar with, and then that's when I, I was, uh, end up at... Uh, this yeah. was just a block and half So in between, there. you were living with your sister for a little while. Oh, no. No. She, not very long. She didn't like the place or was too much or something, so she moved out, and I stayed put. Then when Virgie, my friend Virgie, moved downstairs with me, and she and I uh, roomed together and paid, we, you know, shared the rent, and we went, and we went to... Kane's Academy a lot. We went to the dances and and uh, we had dances on Thursday night and Saturday night back then. And we'd always go eat together whenever it's her payday, she'd pay for the food. And if it's my payday, I'd pay for the food. <laughs> One time we were sitting in this particular place and I had uh, lima beans and ham, I think it is. And I had to, I don't know what happened, but I was cutting up these ham and my beans and my forks, knife slipped and beans went everywhere. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe I was in this restaurant and these bean, big old lima beans, they were big beans. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe I did that. They had to clean up after me. Oh, no. oh my gosh, I just wonder if Virgie remembers. <laughs> the first time you went back the summer, your mother wasn't at home. Did you talk about that? Talk about what? When the first time you went back home at the summer when your mother, after your mother passed. Oh, uh, that, after I went, after, after well, I no, the first, school, You uh, mentioned the first Christmas that she was Christmas, there. oh. That was not, that was not a. Oh, it was sad. No, it, was, it just seemed like. Nobody did anything. Nobody had anything. And uh, Marie, Aunt she, Minnie went to Aunt Minnie's. No, she never did pay attention to us in that. Mm. That's too bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was just a few months after you came back to school after your mom died. Came back in October. That you went Christmas. back home for Christmas. Yeah. Did your sister and you both go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. I don't remember that, but I remember me and my youngest brother, we went out to Amarillo. My uh, older brother was in Amarillo. He was working in Amarillo. After he got back from the Navy, he went out there. But he had married before he went in the Navy, and they had one little boy. And uh, anyway, we went out, he, we got, he got the bus and went out there to Amarillo and stayed with them for a while during that summer. And I always remember he had some kind of a car, but it wasn't air conditioned. And we come back to Tulsa, and I mean it was hot. And it was when this was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that spring after he came home, he come up to 
She walked over to get us and he had that, I don't even know what kind of Chevy it was, but it was an old Chevrolet, some kind of old car that it wasn't air conditioned. And I said, if you wish driving about 50 miles an hour back then, I thought it was really fast. I wasn't used to riding in a car. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, then he's holding on your hat. at one another, and I thought, oh my God, he's driving fast. He, there's something that happened to him while he's in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I blamed on Navy. I don't think he drove slow after that. <laughs> that but that was, uh, that was long That's about funny. February that it, it, it let us go home to visit with him when he finally come. But you know, the war was over, and well, it was over when Mom was in the hospital in our in August, and then it was over uh, in September. But anyway, he didn't get to come home till the next spring. Mm -hmm. But I, I asked him one time, I said, how come you didn't get to come home with another guy? I said, I said, what was you doing at that time? He said, we were, uh, eh, what's the word? They were Cleaning up? taking the uh, people out of Japan. Oh, like I evacuating. Guess, American, yeah, evacuating. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that ship was doing. But the thing is, there were so many ships during the war, they all couldn't come into to the uh, shipyards. Mm -hmm. So they had to take turnabout anyway to yeah. come in. So and that's what he was doing, uh, evacuating the people from Japan. So he finally got to come home the following February. So they let us go home for a few days to visit with him. Oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. So we're almost out of time, but I wanted to just to close this last little bit because you've talked a little bit about um, Albert moving to Dallas and you moving to Tulsa, but at some point you you changed that up a little bit because you well, married he, and had children. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, he used to come see me when I was in Tulsa when he was able. But then he rented a, a, in a room and house too. But this lady that owned it, she was an older lady, and she didn't drive, but she had this nice car. See? But anyway, he used to drive her around in her car. She had a nice new Dodge, I think it was. But anyway, he used to, he, when he went home, he sometimes he went home from Cowster to visit with her, and she didn't mind him using her car. Because when she wanted to go in a place, he would take her to East Texas. But anyway, he, he um, came to see me uh, I think one time, I guess. He came on to Tulsa instead of... A, uh, staying in McCallum Street, he came on top <laughs> Well, anyway, that was another weekend. But anyway, after then, uh, I... Uh, that was only about a year, though, wasn't it, that you had that distant relationship? A year? I think it was oh, a year. we just called one another up every once in a while. I worked for a phone company, and I had my own phone company. My own phone Telephone. Oh, and you he, got to make a few personal calls, did you? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, that's and he had a phone. phone? Was there a phone in Big Mama's house? I guess he big, used Big Mama's. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But he, he wherever, well, you had pay phones back then. You, know, but, you can call anybody if you had the money. You can call from any place. So, so how did he lure you down to Texas? Because I'm assuming he did, considering well, that's where you yeah, live now. Well, uh, I think I came to. Texas in March on my birthday, my 21st birthday. And then after then, we decided to get married. So well, I went back home. I had to think about that for a while because I had another boyfriend on the line. Oh! <laughs> I had to write James and let him know oh, we right. were going to get the married uh, because Je James was in the Navy. And you know, he used to send me gifts. He sends, he sent me, I don't know how to, and he's, every birthday he'd send me a, some kind of a card, you know, <laughs> greeting card. So she had to send him to Dear John. Right? Yeah, I had to send him Dear John. I always heard of Dear John letters, but I had to write that one. But see, here's the thing, James and Albert, they were at Shilako at the same time. They both worked at the power plants. But so James used to holler out the window at me, and, and he was teasing me about Albert. But then later on, I saw James in Tulsa, and he decided he liked me. But, but you I got said, married in May, so just so you had a, just a March to May courtship. 
Yeah, you got married in May, the first yeah. part of May. Yeah. In so you well, came I had home. to go back to work, and he did too, I guess. So you came back from Dallas, decided you were going to write James a letter and tell him you're getting married, and then yeah. two months later went down and got married. Yeah. Well, he came up there. In Tulsa. Uh, he came yeah, oh, he Tulsa. came to Tulsa. You got yeah. married in Tulsa. Yeah, we got married in Tulsa. And he... Well, he had managed to get a car, a 48 Chevrolet. Yeah. He had down payment when he came to get me. All I had was I put in the back trunk of the car, yeah. and we went out to well, Flossie, his sister, was yeah. and Clifford was out in West Texas somewhere, towards the Panhandle, I can't think, Borger, Borger, Texas. But anyway, he uh, we went out there to see them. And then we came all the way back to Dallas. And who was it that was at your wedding? There was uh, somebody that... Miss da uh, Wilma's mother, oh, Miss well, Daniel. I hate at this point to have to wrap it up, but we've got to let them them go. But okay. is is there anything that just sort of on parting that you wanted to talk about that, um, you know, the a memory or a thought about Shalako that maybe you didn't get to share or, or just a general feeling about what the school was? Oh, the Navajos. I forgot to I put that on my last list there. You Look, we have a way to copy. See, there's yeah. so many things happening. Can I oh, take it with me and copy? I can't do it here right this now is, if they're close yeah. enough. Okay. But I can send it back. Okay. We can talk about this. Yeah, because she wrote something last night. Okay. I haven't even read. We don't, we don't have time to go into, I really hate that we don't. Um, oh, see. Well, I just realized since first day in Oklahoma City, we can come back to the museum store in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. probably going to need to. Yeah. Oh, they talked about the flaming air here. Yeah. We hung out to social. So was it an overall good experience for you, or were there things that you wished were different? Oh, well, I don't know how it'd be any different. Oh, right. <laughs> well, your mother might not have died. It's just what we had at well, home that. could never compare with all we received at Shilako. Three well, meals a day was physical big. things yeah, and an education, big. learn how to do it. The thing is, you learn how to be with people, how to get along with people. And you have to forgive, and if they don't forgive you, okay, so don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you take me to the You're going to need that. All right. I really appreciate your time today Thank in this. You. This has been really interesting.